Crash Twin Sanity was the first game I ever played. No. Crash Twin Sanity was the first Crash game I ever played, and it's always been a favorite. Which kind of makes this video worry me, because like, so far, it feels like most of the games I've revisited for this channel have become this dark, depressing reality check of, oh, hey, that game you loved as a kid? Nah, that shit sucked. Now, to be fair, it's not as good as I remember it being, with my little rose-tinted nostalgia glasses, but the gameplay, story, music, and level design all hold up, kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of. The story takes place three years after Wrath of Cortex, which, fun fact, was the first real Crash game that I played but I only played it for like 5 minutes at a friend's house before he decided to put on that one episode of Goosebumps with the mask getting stuck on the girl's face and I started crying from how scared I was and I had to be taken home. Uh, yeah, but 3 years after Wrath of Cortex, Neo Cortex is frozen in a little a little popsicle ice pop, mm, yummy. But he escapes and stuns Coco and cuts off her hair and now he's Coco. Oh, how progressive this game was. He starts calling Crash but he calls him over in like a seductive way which is weird cause like that's supposed to be his sister, quite question mark. Uh, this level sets the tone of the game super Superbly, yeah. Yeah, I said superbly. You like that? You like I'm using different words to describe things now? Huh? I'm smart. Uh, the game has kind of an open world quote unquote setting, as in you're kind of just let loose on this decently sized open area, and you kind of run around, and you explore, and shenanigans are, are all afoot, and, and I kind of love it. You chase these chickens into TNT boxes, which lets you get this gem, which is one of many collectibles in the game. You can jump up this waterfall, rock mountain thing, and just watch the fish brutally fall to their deaths, and I've always found this fucking hilarious. The whole game has this upbeat Saturday morning like cartoon energy. It's easily the best part. It's the, it's the part that has aged the best, but you know what hasn't aged the best? Uh, the pattern you find yourself in if you die and you have to watch the same cutscene over and over and over again because you can't skip the cutscenes in this game and it's kind of torture. We, we follow Cortex to this boss fight where he's all, ah, I can't kill you and it's so frustrating and he attacks you and both of them fall into this cave where you start rolling around as in fighting and you do some platforming. Cortex finds a crystal and when they head out of the cave, these two birds from a different dimension or whatever come out and these guys fucking suck, but, but more on that later. They vow revenge towards Cortex and they take out his brains. Uh, he runs off in fear. We go after him. He's like, ah, how I miss the simple days of enjoying nature and those around us until a bunch of bees attack him. And we need to get him through this obstacle course where a, a beehive falls on his head and the bear starts to chase him. I, I love, I love the comedy in this game. The local natives take Cortex as a hostage. We go rescue him. The boring alien bird thing say some shit. Who cares? We get this boss fight. Uh, yeah, so the birds mention this treasure that they have and, and that kind of motivates Cortex to go into their dimension because they're from another dimension to try and take the treasure to do that we need to get to his base out in the cold plains of the uh antarctic i guess we get a bunch of moments with these sassy penguins Uh, Cortex and Crash go after more power crystals to power the Dimensionator by snowboarding down a mountain and crashing into Dingo Dial's house where he, he overhears the treasure conversation and I'm guessing he tells the other villains about it because they all seem aware of the treasure now and they all go after it by becoming like the easiest fucking boss fights ever. Uh, they get back to the lab uh, but before they can use the Psychotron, it's called the Psychotron. The thing I called the Dimensionator earlier is it's called the Psychotron. It's just a better way. I just finish and Ferb. You know, uh, Coco runs in and attacks Cortex which damages the machine and paralyzes her once again. And so now in order to fix it, they need to recruit Cortex nieces, Cor Cortex niece, Nina, at, at the spooky school of spooks. Uh, we sneak in through the sewers, face off against Dingo Dow, and we get the backstory of the two bird alien things where Cortex would experiment on them, but he accidentally sent them to the 10th dimension, and they were transformed by the radioactivity in the dimension. We get to the 10th dimension, and Nina is kidnapped, so we go through some more shenanigans, this time the sci-fi kind. Uh, we get to the twins base, where we face off in the final battle, and the twins run off and head into this house that belongs to Evil Crash from this dimension who by the way is like a character and he fucking eats them mm, yum. uh we cut to cortex who decides to try to kill crash but he accidentally teleports himself into crash's brain where now he's stuck being surrounded by a bunch of dancing crash bandicoots forever and ever the end wow yeah so when the story is good it, it's really good the writing itself is great and cortex is genuinely hilarious throughout the saturday morning cartoon vibe fits perfectly between these two and the energy stays chaotic all the way through the gameplay itself still feels great it's still responsive and smooth and easy to control while the platforming itself can have some actual challenging moments. Sometimes it feels a, a bit unfair for sure, but like crash controls really good and you never feel like the controls get in the way of the platforming. Uh, when you play as Cortex and, and, and you play as Cortex, he controls really good as well. Really good. Is really good a thing? I think it is. 
I need whatever. I enjoy his little shooter segments. Nina controls like a dream. There you go. And is easily one of my favorite parts of the game when you play as her. And, and when Crash and Cortex are running around together, the game doesn't lose its responsiveness and its controls. And the little puzzles you need to solve with them together are platforming focused and they feel fun all the way through. Uh, uh, the music is also another top tier plus. Every single song is perfect and the whole soundtrack is performed by Spiral Mouth, which is an acapella group. And damn, like damn, this is easily one of the most memorable soundtracks of any game ever like I, I listen to this shit in my free time because sometimes i feel like like oh fuck i'm, I'm fucking platforming down the street while listening to it and then i get hit by a car With all that being said, uh, the actual twins, the villains of the game, the ones in the fucking title, Twin Sanity, they they bog this guy. They they, they 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 bring this game down a lot. They're they're not necessary, and even the reveal doesn't do much to change it. Like you could have just taken out Twin Sanity from the title, called it Crash Insanity, and you would have a way better game. Just make it that Cortex discovers another dimension with the treasure that in it, and he's using Crash to get to that dimension and collect all the crystals needed to open the portal, take the twins out, and you have a way better game. Uh, the story tries to flesh these characters out and give them screen time that just leads to me wanting to skip it because Crash already has these fantastic enemies, and it even teases them in the beginning only for them to disappear for the entire game until they randomly appear again at some point, making a, a small reference to the treasure, and then they get defeated. And, and sometimes when you defeat them, you don't even get to see what happens to them after that. The boss fight ends and the game cuts to black, and it just brings you to the next area. And it's like, what? And we know this game was rushed. This game was rushed. Like, this game, this game was rushed. But, but it's just crazy because somewhere out there is a fucking another, the 10th universe where we got the crash insanity and instead of the twins being in the game, we get what I just described and it's way better and the title fits way better. A, a perfect example is when you get to Engine's ship and you run the gauntlet, defeat him on his platform and they fall down into the kitchen area where you get chased by Rusty Walrus who doesn't even get a backstory or anything other than this fucking chase. Why? Because it has to focus on the stupid twins. Um. But after this chase, we face off against Entropy and, and, and Embryo, and, and like this is the perfect way to have the plot play out, because it feels like Crash and Cortex are on this huge adventure together where every step is just this chaotic fight for survival, while it still feels like a Saturday morning cartoon. And if we didn't have the stupid twins plotline to like slow shit down, we could have easily fleshed out the villains that we already have more as they are in this game with their motives to find the treasure. But instead, we have the stupid fucking twins. And it's driving me twins, hey baby, twins, because it's twin sanity, because it's, uh, it's in the title guys, come on, we're gonna be here. While I made a big deal over that complaint, it still doesn't take away from how much I love this game. I used to love it so much, I still honestly love it just as much, it, this shit was fun. The energy, the vibes are all they're high the entire time, it's, it's a really, really fun time. I, I just I just can't help but think about what could have been, but you know what, it was, it, it was good to play a game that's good. Um, yes, good. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. No, I'm, it's 8 out of 10. I'm doing scores now. I'm doing, you, maybe I won't forever. I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna forget. I'm playing The Simpsons Skateboarding next, so I really wanted to play something that was fun. But that's next, and I already have heard things, fun things, fun. Thanks for watching. I'm stuck! The greatest evil scientist in the world! Stuck in a pipe. How could things get any worse?